As promised, our next segment is on the struggle for abortion rights as the Supreme Court is poised to strip away the right to abortion for women. And uh, as we've been reporting over the last uh, months, uh, the organization that my co-host, Sansara Taylor, has formed, Rise Up for Abortion Rights, has been out in the field and calling for a week of struggle, a week of action on May 8th to 14th. And so we want to get into, look who's here! Hey, Andy! Back in Los Angeles, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm glad to see you again. And uh, if you thought that was corny, you ain't seen nothing yet. No. (laughs) (laughs) You're messing with me. I'm messing with you, but actually I'm really happy you're back. Thank you. I'm really happy you're back. And we're going to get into this. It was his idea that I would walk in from off stage. I had another idea, but we didn't go there. Okay, so... It's a surprise that she's back here for a short while because she's been on the road quite a bit, not only in New York City, but last week uh, we on the show, uh, we, we uh, had video of, of you and uh, a delegation from Rise Up for Abortion Rights in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, and uh, this is a, actually this is a really good segment last week. Go back and watch uh, episode number 98. One of the things that we got in later uh, from that trip you took was uh, some news reports. You guys Mm -hmm. were on the news in Louisville, Kentucky, and we want to just show you one of those reports now before we get into uh, our segment. Protesters on both sides of the abortion debate collided in downtown Louisville today. The group Rise Up for Abortion Rights was met by members of local churches on the front steps of Metro Hall. Wave News reporter David Ochoa was at the rally and has more from both sides. Yeah, the event was put together by Rise Up for Abortion Rights to protest the abortion law vetoed by Republicans last week. They were met by counter-protesters who heard about the rally a couple of days ago. And what was meant to be a one-sided affair turned into a combination of equally passionate protests. Abortion on The rally was put together in response to the state law that effectively eliminated abortions in Kentucky. The law has been temporarily blocked by a federal judge, and the news broke as the protests began. And organizers say while it's a win for today, it's not a solution. But women were told that their lives, their plans, their hopes for their future didn't count for anything. They were going to be forced to have children against their will whether they wanted to or not. Their pro-abortion chants and slogans were met with shouts from the opposition. We're out here to speak for children, for the children of Louisville, Kentucky. These little children are precious gifts from God. No one says he isn't surprised that the law was blocked. He called it weak. We need to totally abolish abortion. We need to outlaw, we need to be a sanctuary city that protects the lives of children. But there are people who think this way, who sit in the state legislatures, who sit on the courts, who are gunning for the rights and the lives of women, and they have as much contempt for women's lives as these people do. There were just over 4,000 abortions performed in Kentucky in 2020. Over half were done by women aged 20 to 29. When abortion was illegal, women died. Women's lives were shattered, and we will not go back. News of the law being blocked, Kentucky Planned Parenthood CEO Rebecca Gibran said in a statement, quote, This is a win, but it is only the first step. We're prepared to fight for our patients' rights to basic health in court and to continue doing everything in our power to ensure abortion access is permanently secured in Kentucky. Rise Up for Abortion Rights is planning a week of a- uh, action for abortion rights next month, ending with a unified day of protest on May 14th. Live in the studio, David Ochoa, Wave News. So, Sansara, the Supreme Court is on track to take away the right to abortion this spring. And as the reporter in the story noted, that Rise Up for Abortion Rights has called for this week of resistance on May 8th to May 14th, including, and this is important, a unified day of mass protests on May 14th. This is a protest in the streets, not online, in the streets. So could you tell us a bit more about this? Yes, so starting May 8th on Sunday, Rise Up for Abortion Rights is calling for a mass week of action and protest acts big and small across this country among everybody who does not want to see women forced to have children against their will. Everybody has a role to play on the campuses, in the streets, in the arts, in the churches, synagogues and mosques, and most of all in the streets. 
There need to be student, and there are actually student walkouts planned. There's going to be actions by Spanish speakers at the churches on Mother's Day, uh, May 8th. There's going to be days of big uh, banner drops, like the green bandana shaped banner drops, and all kinds of ways of spreading the word across this country and challenging everybody to get into the fight to stop the Supreme Court from taking away the right to abortion. And this is going to culminate on May 14th, Saturday as you mentioned, in a unified day of mass protests across this country to declare, we refuse to let the Supreme Court take away the right to abortion, abortion on demand and without apology. So, Sansar, what is the main purpose of this week? Most people have no idea that the Supreme Court is on track to take away abortion rights. And they don't know what this would mean either for the lives and future of women and girls across this country. They have no idea the enslavement of women that this will bring, the shattering of lives, the foreclosing of dreams, the violence that women will be trapped in, abusive relations when they're forced to have children against their will, and the many other ways that they'll be told that their dreams, their ambitions, their plans, their physical safety don't count for anything. The state is going to force them to have children against their will. So we have to wake people up to this emergency. That's one of the big missions of this week of action. For people to get out in every realm of society and wake people up and sound the alarm. But that's only one part of it. We also need to let people know, like it says on the Rise Up for Abortion Rights website, only the people can stop this. People need to know the role that they have to play in taking to the streets and joining this struggle. There is no recourse right now to stop this Supreme Court. It's got a super majority of fascist judges. There's no recourse in the normal official political channels of this system in its elections and its courts and its normal workings. And so we have to rise up and bring people into the streets outside those channels and massive resistance that creates such an upheaval in this society that the Supreme Court has to recalculate what it thinks it can get away with. This is an institution, the Supreme Court and the rulers of this country overall. They're, they are political institutions and they do calculate their perceived legitimacy in the eyes of the people and in the eyes of the people of the world and other governments around the world. And if there is enough upheaval in this country of people drawing a line and saying we refuse to let this happen, we have a fighting chance to stop this great atrocity. And so the week of action is aimed at giving people forms all week long to join this struggle, to wake others up, to shake others up, and then culminate in a, in a mass day of unified protest on May 14th to really say, we're not going to let this go down. Women need abortion on demand and without apology. And we're going to do this through getting out there, like I said, in unignorable ways, kind of like what we did down in Kentucky. We have to go out where people are not fighting this. They don't know about it. And we need to do this in unignorable ways that wake them up and call them into this struggle. Since our, this week is very important, and particularly your point of we have to get out very, very broadly and continue to stir the mass of people up who don't know about this. They're not, there's just millions of women and young women who, whose whole future is ahead of them. If they knew about this, they would act. But I, I, I want to just make this point. We should not underestimate what we have already accomplished. Things are sharpening up with the state laws that we've reported on in previous uh, episodes of this show. I mean, really horrific things, out, basically outlawing abortion, and penalizing uh, uh, doctors and deputizing any citizen to go after anybody who helps with abortion. So things are sharpening up at the state level. The Supreme Court is approaching its deadline. And we're going out to lots of people. But already what you've done has had an effect. There's already all of this combined, not just what you've done, but what you've done has created a certain tension among those forces who should be in the streets, mm -hmm. the forces who should be in the streets and have not been, but say, no, we're planning for a post-Roe world, are beginning to talk of, well, maybe we need to get this. We talk, oh, maybe we'll just go online. But they need to, we need to put two hands on their back while going out broadly, because if we mobilize masses of people, that will compel these forces to be in the streets with us. Now, listen, it's very important, and we want to say as a matter of principle and a matter of necessity, that if you are a person, or if you are an organization who supports the right to abortion, if you are opposed to the Supreme Court stripping away this right, 
There is no moral reason. There is no political reason. There is no objective reason why you should be standing aside from the struggle just because you think it's going to be a difficult one to win. Everybody has to come out and unite as one around this. This is what has been done, and you brought this out all through Latin America, mm -hmm. all through South America. That's how they've won these struggles. But not here in the United States. That needs to change. And what you are doing, Sansara, is part of making that change. And you should not underestimate, no one should underestimate the importance of what has already been achieved. And yes, how far we have to go, but the import of what you're doing. So I did want to ask you, you have this new... Uh, beautiful band, green bandana. This is not just a Western one, but it actually has a slogan on it. Well, as you were mentioning, uh, there was a massive struggle in Latin America. It started in Argentina, spread to Colombia and Mexico. Other places have taken it up. But in those three countries, through the mass struggle of women in the streets and really challenging all sections of society, they decriminalized abortion where it had been criminalized and women were sent to prison for miscarriages. And they did it. The symbol they took up was this green bandana. And it became a symbol. First in Argentina, it spread and really went all over the world. This is a symbol of struggling in the streets for abortion rights. And we've taken it up here. We're popularizing it here. And this is something that should be spread all throughout the week of, re week of action, the week of resistance. And people need to show which side you're on. And we just got new ones printed that say riseupforabortionrights.org, hashtag green for abortion. You can get yours at the riseupforabortionrights.org website, or you can get a green bandana wherever you can find one, make your own. But tell people what it means, wear it every day, and spread them. This is a form of struggle. So, yeah. All right, Sitsar. Well, good to have you back in the studio, and uh, this is an important struggle. Uh, it has everything to do uh, with May 1st and changing the world and celebrating the struggle and being part of the struggle and getting organized to stop this attack on a fundamental right for half of humanity. And it's a fundamental part, an integral part, I should say, of the struggle to forge a people who want to be rid of this system and fight for a radically different and better world where all of humanity, men and women, differently gendered people, all nationalities, all over the world could build a future worthy of humanity. So with that, we'll see you next week. Very good.